What's good, Skate Athletics fam? Welcome back to the channel. This video is gonna be a continuation of one of my previous videos, Injury Prevention 101 for Knee Pain. And in that video, I discussed patella tendon pain, some of the causes, and how to prevent it from occurring. But what that video doesn't cover is how to fix your patella tendon pain if you're already suffering. So that's what this video is gonna be about. And as a quick refresher, patella tendon pain can come from a variety of different issues, but for this video, I wanna focus on patellar tendinopathy. In short, patellar tendinopathy occurs when your tendon experiences more stress than it's capable of withstanding. Dr. Aaron Horshig over at Squat University provides an easy to understand example in one of his articles. Think of your patellar tendon strength like a thermometer. If the amount of stress you place on your tendon is in this green area, AKA your tendon's load capacity, then you're chilling. Your tendon will exhibit a normal recovery response and you won't feel any pain. But if you place too much stress on your tendon and you get into this yellow area, well, then you're If your tendon's chronically overstressed, as we said, you're gonna experience pain, tendon degradation, and a bunch of other bad stuff can occur. But in this video, we're not gonna dive into the different stages of tendinopathy. We're gonna now focus on what to do if you're currently in pain. So here's the premise behind your rehab program. You're trying to increase your tendon's load bearing capacity to withstand the load, aka the stress, you place on your tendons during your skate sessions. If you're experiencing pain, at one point you push it too far, but once we increase your tendon's load-bearing capacity, you'll no longer experience the pain, swelling, and other future tendon problems. Research shows your tendons become stronger by increasing their stiffness levels in response to acceptable training loads. I found this pretty interesting, so hear me out. When your tendon is exposed to an overload of stress, there is a short-term exaggerated response of the cells that make up your tendon. Small proteins called proteoglycans flood the extracellular matrix, causing your tendon to become more swollen and painful. And since the cellular response is majorly responsible for the swelling, not inflammation, ice and rest will not help fix the injury. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll just take some time off and then I'll be good, Unfortunately, you're mistaken. As you take time to rest without exercising, your tendon's load bearing capacity is just gonna decrease. So then when you get back on your board, you're gonna start off with a much lower load bearing capacity than you even originally had. And if that's the case, less time spent on your board is gonna re-aggravate that injury. And of course, that's not helpful for the long term. Okay, so this part is probably gonna be the most important component of your recovery program. It's extremely important for you to find the correct load that's gonna elicit an appropriate recovery response so we avoid overdoing it. And to help identify this load, we're gonna use pain as a reference scale. In short, the recommended load I want you to use is one that doesn't cause pain during or after the exercise. However, this weight does need to be heavy and roughly greater than 70% of your one rep max. And this is where your program is gonna get a little tricky. These exercises need to be heavy and quite intense, but they can't cause pain. So you need to be extremely aware of what exercises cause you pain and which don't. For example, a heavy box squat might not cause you any pain, but a single leg decline squat might cause you a ton of pain. And if that's the case, all we gotta do is regress the exercise that's causing you pain, and you can progress the other exercise that doesn't cause you pain. So instead of a single leg decline squat, you can do a single leg cone reach, and then you can actually increase the intensity of your box squat if it feels good. You'll hear me say this a lot throughout the rest of the video. One of the main keys to your recovery process is being able to listen to your body. If the exercise hurts, either regress it or don't do it. Find something that's an adequate replacement and then we'll slowly progress. For patellar tendinopathy, program length is gonna be all over the place. It's very individualized. If you're experiencing light to moderate patellar tendinopathy, research shows it's gonna take up to 12 weeks. But if you're experiencing moderate to severe patellar tendinopathy, it could take months and even up to a year. No matter where you're at on the spectrum, we just gotta be patient. Once you're back on the board, if you rebuilt it properly, you're gonna be skating it with a much stronger and more stable knee. So as we said, everyone's program is gonna be a little bit different based on your level of tendinopathy, but the general outline is gonna look like this. Stage one, we'll use isometric exercises to manage pain and isotonic exercises to cause the increase in tendon stiffness, AKA strength. Isometrics have been shown to be an effective way to decrease pain before a workout so you can ultimately perform more volume in that session. However, the isometric exercise has to be very challenging and up to about 45 seconds. A couple good exercises that load your patellar tendon isometrically 
are single leg wall sits, Spanish squats, and Bulgarian split squats. Here's a quick walkthrough for the Spanish squat. Wrap a thick exercise band around a squat rack, a pole, or anything sturdy. Ideally, you'll want a thicker band than the one I have shown in the video. Move away from the rack to create some tension on the band, then drop into a squat, keeping your shins vertical and your knees directly above your toes. Externally rotate your knees against the band, grip the ground, maintain a neutral spine, and embrace the burn. The whole idea behind the Spanish squat is to fatigue your quads and your glutes while taking that stress off your patellar tendon. Like we discussed before, your tendon will actually adapt to these isotonic exercises becoming stiffer, and that's where we're actually gonna increase your tendon's load-bearing capacity. These isotonic exercises are gonna be characterized as heavy, slow resistance exercises. I only want you starting these exercises if your pain is already less than a three out of 10. If it's anything more than that, focus on isometrics for a couple weeks, and if the pain persists, think about going to see an orthopedic specialist or a physical therapist. Okay, but back to what we were saying. These heavy, slow resistance exercises are a great way to load your tendon without pushing it past the threshold. Some squat variations I recommend you focus on are regular, split stance, lateral, and single leg. So your day-to-day -day workouts are gonna look something like this. Focus your energy on that main lift, which is gonna be your squat variation. And then for the rest of your exercise, you can fill it in with accessory lifts to help correct pre-existing imbalances. So exercises you can choose are Romanian deadlifts, hip flexion raises, tibialis raises, Copenhagen planks, band walks, anything that you feel you need. I wanna give you a bunch of freedom as far as exercise selection to keep you engaged in the program. Personally, I feel very strict programs get very boring and I have a hard time sticking to them. So I'd much rather see you doing a variety of different exercises, but staying consistent to the program. Just remember, these exercises cannot hurt. Do not be that guy who's thinking no pain, no gain. This is not gonna help you here. So I hope the overall message is clear. I want you to follow this general outline, but feel free to switch up the exercises that you use. Overall, I want you to start with four sets of your main lift, and that can be one to three different exercises. Follow your main lifts with three to four sets of three to four different corrective exercises to once again, correct imbalances throughout the body. As we said, there are so many different factors that can contribute to your knee pain, so the rest of your program is really gonna focus on creating a well-rounded body. So here's what your long-term overview is gonna look like. In general, we're gonna keep the same rep and intensity scheme for two weeks. And we're gonna work our way all the way down to four sets, six reps at 90% of your one rep max. So as you can see, by the end of your program, you are gonna be using very heavy loads. So this means it's extremely important to once again, not be in pain. If you progress too fast and you're using 85% and you're in pain, Trust me, you're not doing any good for yourself. So as we said before, the tempo of your main lift is gonna be extremely slow because that places less elastic force on your tendon. Specifically, we're gonna adopt a 3-1-3 tempo, which means you're gonna take three seconds in that eccentric phase, which is lowering to the ground. I want you to pause for one second at the bottom, and then we're gonna stand back up with control, taking another three seconds. As far as all the accessory lifts, you don't have to focus on the tempo too much, just focus on accumulating volume. So to test your progress throughout your program, we're gonna use the single leg decline squat or single leg squat to test if you experience any pain. If you have a slant board, that's great. You can use a BOSU ball or essentially anything to put you in this incline position. Or if you don't have that, that's also fine. We're just gonna do a normal single leg squat. The incline and single leg nature of this exercise places a little extra stress on your tendon. So naturally, it's a good indicator of, of how much stress our tendon can handle. To mimic a more skateboarding environment, we're actually not gonna use the slow tempo for this test. I want you to just squat naturally and then stand back up to test if there's any pain. Perform 10 reps of the single leg squat, then take a second to reflect on your pain levels. If your pain was less than a three, it's a good sign and we're moving on. If it was anything more, then we need to reflect back to the program. Once again, we have to identify what exercises that could have potentially caused the pain or if we use too heavy of a load. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. You can either comment below and we'll start that conversation or shoot me a DM on my Instagram. I know this part gets a little tricky and yeah, you're really gonna need to be able to trust your body on this one. If an exercise hurts, it doesn't mean you're soft. Let's just reassess. It could be the weight, it could be the movement, or you could just have to do something different. Now let's talk about plyometrics. So plyometrics are a necessary part of your healing process because obviously that's what skateboarding is. Basically, if you can't jump without your knee hurting, you're not gonna be able to skate. Once you're experiencing absolutely no pain during that single leg squat test and during all your workouts, I'll give you the clear to begin plyometric exercises. And you can choose, you can either do these in the gym, you can do these outside, or honestly, you can go skate. 
You just have to be smart. If you're starting with extremely bad patellar tendinopathy, maybe just think about doing single leg drop landings to build up your confidence, progress to box jumps, then you can progress to actual jumps, bounds, and things like that. If you're more in that moderate range, start with box jumps, see how those feel. Then you can start doing normal jumps, hurdle jumps, see how ollieing feels, see how skating feels. But once again, just be smart. If you're skating around and ollies feel okay and ollies feel okay, but kickflips don't, obviously don't kickflip. Stay under that threshold because now you just gotta shift your focus. We're making progress on our knee, not on our skateboard. Once your knee is now fully stable and stronger, you'll be able to progress so much quicker on your board. As far as volume goes for plyometrics, I want you to start pretty light. So start with like, let's say 10 or 15 reps and one exercise. If you're gonna go skate, that means take it pretty light. Maybe 20, 30 minutes, if anything more than that, especially if it starts to hurt, you just gotta stop. Once you start to feel better and that knee progresses, we can start to add some volume. You can do 20 reps, you can do three to four sets. You can skate a little bit longer. You get the point. Please just be smart. All right, so as we touched on like a million times during this video, patience is gonna be one of the biggest keys to your recovery process. Everyone's rate of recovery is gonna be a bit different. Some of you might be good to go after 12 weeks and some of you may not. But all I can really say is listen to your body, be patient and be smart. If any exercise hurts, adapt. Either regress the exercise or lower the intensity or choose a different exercise. You have that freedom to encourage consistency. Because honestly, the more consistent you are to this program, the faster you'll be back on your board. All in all, just don't give up. If you're not seeing instant results, don't get frustrated. It's part of the process. Tendon adaptations do actually take a long time to happen. It's unfortunate, but trust me, once your knee's feeling better, you'll feel so much better on the board. Last thing, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this style of content, please go ahead and do me a favor, smash that like button down below and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, y'all. That's it for this video. I'll catch you guys later on Skate Athletics. This is Nabil, everyone. I told you. I told you. I told you.